Good evening, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is October 24, 2024. Here is another daily analysis. We just uh, got a very choppy day today uh, after yesterday flash crash or sell off to the downside market. Just a uh, Tested SMA 20 on S&P 500 and then retracing back up nicely. Today, we just got a bullish Harami here, but I'm not sure if it's going to be just the beginning of the rally or just a dead cat bounce after yesterday's sell-off. Market just is showing a technically a reacted to some, uh, some certain levels. If we get to one hour chart, I'm going to show you exactly how market reacted very nicely. So we just got very close to this important pivotal point. So look at that. Here is um, the neckline that we can see from the market. So market just uh, sparking higher after that nice bullish consolidation and heading to new all-time high. Yesterday, we just uh, got exactly to this level. So this is kind of like hourly institution level. And also, this is a neckline that uh, took lots of pressure for breakthrough. So when we see something like this, we should just say this is going to be a back test, and this back test reacted very nicely with uh, with the buyers. Just that uh, came back, and a good uh, potential uh, kind of like an intermediate bottom. I mean, like a short term bottom for the market. However, we are just uh, getting another back test to yesterday candle, and then getting back to the upside. So right now, uh, traders are just uh, looking for this. If we get above this important pivotal point somewhere around a 5850 i should say 5850 then we can tackle to new all-time high but if market goes up here and then getting back to the downside uh 5840 to 5850 which is going to be this level then that would be kind of like a, this is going to be a dead cat bounce or abc to the downside then we are going to have a major correction I believe that market will have some hiccups here, but ultimately it's going to go down to 50, uh, 5600, uh, 5640. So that's the level that I'm looking at. That's the analysis. Again, we are not predicting. We are not forecasting. We are just educating ourselves day by day, week by week, based on the price chart. Stochastic, we just got a bear reversal uh, two, three days ago, and MACD is going to just uh, show us acceleration to the downside. However, uh, we need to kind of like a see if market holds above this uh, 5680, which is SMA 50. And also, um, so lots of people are looking at SMA 50, but I'm looking at this wide range bar and also this consolidation. And also this pivotal point, this pivotal point, and this is the institution candle. So if we hold above this, getting back to the upside, still we can get to some kind of like a rally to the upside. But if it just bounce and then getting back to the downside for double touch, that is kind of like a head and shoulder pattern is forming for a next uh, uh, sell off to here. I'm kind of like inclined to the second scenario. Still, I'm not bullish at all. So I'm kind of like a cautiously bearish, I would say. Why cautiously? I'm not taking too much short position, but I'm kind of like allocating my cash. When market just uh, gives me buying opportunity here, I'm going to deploy my cash there. If market doesn't give me any buying opportunity, keeps uh, going up higher, then I'm still invested. Right, so I still, uh, it's gonna be a, just a wind in for me. I know that uh, uh, some people are shorting heavily and market just keeps grinding higher. I have short position less than 2%, 2% position uh, of my portfolio are shorts. Uh, the rest is gonna be long. So just imagine you wanna get a quick uh, sell off, then close your short position, deploy money to the long position. So that's how I'm doing basically. Uh, with my subscribers as well. Moving on to US um, um, NASDAQ, uh, US 100 or NASDAQ. So here is the NASDAQ chart daily. And uh, we just got a bullish Harami. We defended SMA 20 and also we defended this area as well. So right now still pattern is bullish. So this is a small bull flag. We can tackle uh, to middle of this box here or even double top or even a slightly nominal new all-time high. But ultimately, I'm looking for a sell-off. So when we are getting close to the election day, I don't know, some people are saying uh, we can get a, a, a election panic because election result cannot be certain. 
and there should be some kind of like ambiguity with an election result. So that's how market is going to collapse after election. Uh, lots of geopolitical, um, uh, sorry, astro, astro uh, events are coming after election as well. So some people, they're uh, just taking care of Astro, they are saying, uh, watch out after election. I'm not postponing my call, so don't get me wrong. I was looking for a bear uh, correction, and it didn't happen, obviously, but it didn't go to new all-time high for NASDAQ as well. So we still, as I said, uh, this is going to be my strategy. Just allocate your cash, wait for a corrective move, uh, and then when corrective move is finished, uh, you can just deploy your money into your positions. US 30, Dow just uh, getting down. Dow find the support exactly at the very good technical level. So here is the wide range bar. And this wide range bar after this uh, consolidation, nicely getting middle of this and bounce back up nicely. So we can see this wide range bar getting back up here. Um, I'm not sure if we get above this pivot, which is gonna be 42,000, somewhere around 700. So 42,700, 42,000, like right exactly this pivot. And then we can get back another potential sell-off to this level, which is important. And I believe that that's going to be kind of like a good bottom information. 49,200 to 41,400. Uh, so that's the area that I'm looking at for Dow. Moving on to... Uh, gold, which had a rally today after yesterday's sell-off, uh, gold is forming a bullish consolidation here. Um, still, I'm not bullish, folks. Um, I know that uh, gold had a fantastic move, pretty close to new all-time high, but it is due for corrective move to the downside. Monthly chart, if you see that, here is the monthly chart, and gold is parabolically uh, overstretched, overbought. Anyway, if you want to slice it and dice it. So whenever we see some kind of like action like this in gold, I have to be careful on that one because um, gold, it is par, it is uh, parabolic. It can go down here all the way to this area, which is exactly head and shoulder breakout to the downside. So this happens before, and this. And very bad with the basing formation. Right now, we had a very nice cup and handle pattern. Nice breakthrough to the upside. New all-time high 27, 44, 27, 50. But I would say if gold gives us a corrective move, that's going to be a good, a fantastic buying opportunity to the upside. At least we can get a decent bounce, even if it doesn't give us um, a new all-time high again. So just I would say, Based on the monthly chart and also weekly chart as well, gold is super overstretched, overbought. A weekly chart can go to 24, 2300, but monthly chart tells me 21 to 2200 is coming. When, I don't know, but I'm not in rush in to get to the momentum, at least for 100, 200 maximum upside limit. It is not my type of trade. All right, folks? Silver doesn't participate in rally today. Silver, we got a doji bar. And at the best case, I should say market is kind of like a confused if we should have rally or sell off or what. So this is a daily chart, a great wide range bar. We can go to the middle of this previous pivot here, somewhere around 32,500, 32.50, uh, 32.60. 32, 32 and that's the level that I'm looking at for silver. Uh, for a potential bounce. Ultimately, you know my level. My level is here, 25 to 26 per ounce. Crude uh, just had a, a um, kind of like a back testing this broken trend line again. So we are just getting back to um, rally, but failed uh, getting back down. But uh, buyer just came back a bit. So crude, uh, 68 points to the downside, still above $70. Uh, 71 actually is holding up very well. Um, wait for more kind of like uh, pattern to the upside. I, I'm i waiting for this because if it breaks through, it's going to be very, very sharp, quick, and a lot of people cannot catch it up. Um, still bullish on this, still looking for more uh, pattern to form to the upside. 
If it goes below this 66, all bullish pattern, all bullish setups are going to be invalidated, and we are just getting back to $40 to $50 per, per barrel. Moving on to individual names, starting with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, after yesterday's sell-off, nice back up today. Good comeback, actually, 2% to the upside. A great move. Um, I believe Bitcoin established itself. If it established itself above 70K, this is my threshold. If it goes above this, then we can see Bitcoin is going to go all the way up to 92,000 area. Moving on to Ethereum, Ethereum Doji. For today, bullish Harami, not a bad session after testing 2466. And we just got back up above 2500. Bond yield still forming its bullish momentum, potentially for the last surge to 4.1 to 4.24. Bond at the same time gets back higher today. So good reversal here, good level, good reversal, 90 to 90, 91 to 92 is going to be a good level. If bond gets back above, 94, then we can see another rally to 103 to 105. Moving on to VIX, 16 cents down today, another bad session, still a good uh, kind of like a back test uh, for a next rally to the upside. Dixie, um, sharp sell off today. So I don't know what was the catalyst, but Dixie is down. So that's why gold is getting back to the upside. But uh, you don't see gold. Miners are following. We will get to those ones. Magma indicator again after yesterday. Sell off still holding up this choppy consolidation. Not a bad session. Apple are just are getting back upside um, after yesterday. Back test this trend line. If it loses this trend line, we're gonna see Apple 198 sub 200. Amazon still holding up this pattern, this neckline here. I know it's tricky now or never situation. So we will see if Amazon gets back above this pivotal point or even gets up, gets back above September 24. Uh, that could be kind of like a rally to the upside. Next week is going to be earning for Amazon. Meta, $4 uptick today. Not a bad session after yesterday's sell-off. Microsoft, $0.13 cents up today. Still holding up, but patterns are getting weaker and weaker. Again, this box, you see that Microsoft, whenever it gets above this, it's just the sellers to control, which is for $30. Google, after uh, yesterday's sell-off, today managed negative as well. Doji Bar, Netflix, it goes back up nicely. Without Tesla, I would say all indexes would be negative. Tesla, Supercharged to the upside, 20% after hours. It just uh, took a hit a bit, a $2. But I would say Tesla, the fantastic move. Great move, actually. And it just uh, forming a very nice uh, trend line test here. So you see that? Um, this is kind of like the third touch, like a rocket, like a SpaceX rocket to the upside, 250 they beat it earning significantly, like above their expectation, but missed their revenue. So that is important. Market doesn't pay attention to that one. However, where are we now? Tesla is at very important level, 250 to 270. This box, you see that whenever Tesla gets from below to above, it's tested and then sell off after that. If it consolidates here, it's going to break out, but I'm not sure about this. Before earning, Tesla was in trouble, almost about to fall off to 167, 186. But after earning, Tesla just uh, went back up horribly to the upside. This is over a stretch, and we'll see how market is going to react next week. Semiconductor index, SMH, dollar up today. Still a weak pattern. Socks, the same pattern here. They are lagging. Taiwan Semiconductor, $2.93 down. AMD, $0.53 cents up today. Still lagging. NVIDIA, uh, $0.85 cents up. Not a bad session for NVIDIA. Holding up pretty close to new all-time high. But if it rolls over, I believe it's going to roll over very bad. It can go lower to, again, sub-100 level. I'm just looking for that one. Texas Instrument, a good surge to the upside after earning. You see that this stock is going higher and higher. This is a good bullish pattern, to be honest. And uh, just I want to show you here, if Texas goes above this line here, which is a very nice uh, bullish uh, bull flag, I would say. So this bull flag, if it triggers to the upside, can easily go to 220 to 225 which is the level that I had before. I thought that Texas is going to get there. 
So maybe this is going to be a good excuse to take us uh, to get to new all-time high. Moving on to Lamb Research, after earning yesterday, just jumped back up nicely. However, this is not the pattern that I like. Wide range bar, triple bottom, it's just going lower and lower, and we will see how it goes. So this is a pattern of weakness, not a fringe. So if we get below this pivotal point, I would say Lamb can go all the way down to 56, testing this area, this gap in this area, which is going to be 50 to 60. XLF, uh, financial spider, just four cents up. KBE, 24 cents up. Uh, getting back to the upside. KRE, 30 cents, cents up. Not a bad session. Banks are getting back to the upside. Early session, it was negative, but now they're just getting powerful again. JP Morgan, good bullish consolidation here. This one can go higher. Uh, Goldman Sachs as well. So $7 up today. Not a bad session getting back to the upside. Seems like they're just a Starting another rally, Bank of America, 31 cents up, and also Wells Fargo, 87 cents up, new all-time high for Wells Fargo, I believe, right? So let me just double check. No, pretty close to new all-time high, actually, for Wells Fargo. It needs to get above this uh, $67. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Moving on to GDX, uh, $2 down today. As I said, when gold miners are not following gold price, that's the warning sign for gold. And they just got back to this important breakout zone, uh, 39 to 43. That's the breakout zone. GDXJ, 29 cents down. Good shadow down there, but still weak. AEM going down. The reason was here, new month. Look at the candle here. 14% after earning yesterday goes down. And this is the area that I'm looking at. $44, even lower, it can go lower. So, but this is this area, I would say, folks, this is a very small one. But if you want to get a bigger picture, 41 to 44, that's the area that I'm looking at for potential bottom information, at least. Franco Nevada um, goes down today, another bad session for them. Gold Barrick goes down as well. XLE, which is a energy spider, they're just uh, getting a uh, uh, Already, they're just uh, holding up, but they are starting to warm up a bit to get back to the rally. Potentially, if crude gets back to the upside, they're going to go up as well. But they are holding up very well. XOP, Oil and Gas Exploration ETF, they just managed positive today. OIH uh, goes uh, negative, but still uh, doing well. Exxon, 68 cents down today and Chevron, uh, three cents down. Chevron looks good to me. This is a bullish if it goes below this uh, September low, then we can say it is a failure pattern, but right now it is okay. So Chevron is kind of like a consolidating and calling for a next rally to 160. All right, folks, I believe I covered everything. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and have a good one. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.